Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all my students are okay. That's fine. Well, today is our session number nine and we are in the fifth week of our study in this semester. But before I talk about uh, today's session and what we are going to discuss and understand in today's session, it's very important that we have to recall what we've done in the previous uh, session. I hope uh, all we are engaged in understanding the classification of consonants and uh, I think all of you by, by now understand that we can classify consonants on the basis of three aspects and they are voicing, place of articulation and manner of articulation. Absolutely right. We try to understand in detail what is voicing. And then we try to understand what is place of articulation. And in the previous session, we try to understand theoretically what is manner of articulation. Is it so? All right. So I also told you, please try to uh, connect each and every session. Whatever we do in the previous session that is connected. And definitely we have to understand uh, whatever the current session is but at the same time that is uh, the session which is connected with the previous one and of course the coming one uh, same is the case with the slides when I ask you to please focus on slides that means you have to focus on each and every slide it's very important uh, because at the end of each session my dear students there is self-assessment component that's why when we just keep on uh, focusing on each and every slide then we can understand and then well, what is the final thing that we have to connect what we've done previously okay I hope that uh, before listening to me all right you've got the time since you have got uh, time and space at home that you can just go and understand what we've done in the previous session or sessions okay well dear students today is our session number nine and now we are in the fifth week. This is the fifth week of our semester. Session number nine, week number five. Our today's uh, topic is primarily, first of all, to try to try to understand what are English consonants. But remember, with reference to manner of articulation, that means our primary concern today is manner of articulation, and we have to understand. The consonants of English why I'm using English as I told you of course in the previous session and not only the previous session throughout the sessions I've been talking about English why because we must have some sort of model of course when we talk about phonetics that doesn't mean that we are particularly talking about English we are talking about any language since we are engaged to understand what is phonetics but specific, specifically, I do talk about English. Why? Because we must have some sort of model before us. And the model before us is English. So definitely we'll be talking about phonetics, of course, the consonants of English with reference to manner of articulation. So that is our primary, primary focus today. Okay? When I say understanding consonants of English, and when I talk about manner of articulation, remember there is only one slide you have in front of you now, but there's a complete world behind this slide. And definitely that world we'll see after this slide. It's written, let's understand nasals, stops, of course, plosives, fricatives, affricates, approximants, and lateral. These are the classes, in fact, of consonants. We try to understand such names when we were talking about manner of articulation theoretically and at the same time I presented before you some of the examples during the previous session. Today we have to understand each and every class in detail. Okay? My dear students, the first class we come across is the nasal. The nasal the nasals you can call. First of all, I like to read the statements for you and then we shall try to understand through analysis. It says, nasal consonants are created when you completely block airflow 
through your mouth and let the air pass through your nose. I repeat, nasal consonants are created when you completely block air, block airflow through your mouth and let the air pass through your nose. So that means we are going to block airflow where? Through. Through what? Yes, exactly through our mouth. And at the same time, when the air is blocked, but it, it really needs to, to go out. Now, the air has to pass through some sort of cavity. Now, the, what is the cavity available now? when mouth is absolutely blocked yes exactly nose is available that means nasal cavity is available and through the nostrils we just produce or we allow the air uh, go outside that's why these consonants which are produced through the nasal cavity are known as nasal sounds I would like to read it again so that you may understand when I'm reading out this statement it is very important that you must try to think what I am saying. Nasal consonants are created when you completely com when you completely block airflow through your mouth and let the let the air pass through your nose. Nasal consonants are created when you completely block airflow through your mouth and let the air pass through your nose. So that means some sort of speech organ inside our mouth is blocking the air. And I hope you remember time and again I told you the different uh, speech organs they play a different role at this time what happened yes vellum part of the soft palate is in fact playing the major role it is not allowing the air to pass or to go to oral cavity during the eight session i told you that we have got two cavities available yes exactly where the air stream is pushed upward and sent to where vocal folds the first processor what happens that is the place where uh, naturally the speaker determines that what kind of sound I am to produce this time for example I am talking to you and naturally as I told you for example a couple of sessions before when I presented before you the entire mechaniz mechanism of speech uh, uh, speech production yes exactly the brain cells all the time giving directions yes exactly and that's wonderful that you can recall now now what happens exactly two cavities are available one is the oral cavity and the second one is the nasal cavity now this time what happened the oral cavity is blocked by vellum definitely it is allowing the airflow all right to have its way through the nostril and what happens three sounds are produced as i told you time and again there are three sounds available which are called nasal sounds and it is very much written over here that three nasal sounds are in English. Okay? Now, what is the first one? The first one is M. Let's try to understand two words which are in front of you. The first one is MAD. The second one is CALM. Now, oral passage is blocked by closing the lips. When you are producing the sound M, you can feel that uh, uh, both lips are together and there is no air at all. Now what happens, the airflow needs to go out somewhere. And as, as I told you, here is the point when vellum, the soft palate, is playing its role. It has blocked the airflow to go to oral cavity. And that's why uh, the airflow is now going towards nasal cavity. And the sound produced is M, mad, and it is bilabial sound at the same time. I told you, I presented before you a complete table. So, on the basis of what? Class, and then what are the articulators involved? That makes a sound bilabial, alveolar, or velar, or labiodental, or dental. Or if the structure involved, all right do you remember yes exactly now m is bilabial you can understand while producing m sound in the uh, in the words of mad and calm you can feel air your 
air needs needs some sort of outlet and there is no outlet except nasal cavity because oral passage is blocked by the lips m then the second sound is n no man again oral passage is blocked by pressing tongue tip against the real air ridge n you can feel your tongue is touching what place yes exactly a real ridge and it is not touching the softer part but it is touching the harder part hard palate oral passage is blocked by pressing tongue tip against the real ridge n and when you talk about the third sound that is the ing sound ing going sing now a, a, a oral passage is blocked by pressing the back of your tongue against the soft palate now now think about the tongue part as i told you our tongue has got four parts as, uh, at least it has four parts tip is there front is there center is there and back is there now this time back of the tongue is playing its role yes exactly what part the back of the tongue oral passage is blocked by pressing the back of your tongue against a soft palate and that's why ing is called the vela sound vela but the top category is nasal because this sound is produced through the nasal cavity no oral cavity is involved over here but nasal cavity so these three sound ma na and ing these are nasals these are nasals why because of the way we produce the way we produce is it clear okay now whatever you have heard i want you to now see the demonstration this is the way the nasal sounds are produced can you see it you can put while seeing this slide and concentrating on this slide i want you to produce the sound m n ing you can understand for example air is pushed upwards by the lungs and what happens you can see the vocal folds can you see them yes exactly the black brackets you can see and now watch the airflow is trying to go to where to oral cavity but something is blocking sometimes what happens if it is m which is a bilabial sound what happens m two lips they don't allow the airflow to come to this area if this is n what happens the tip of the tongue goes somewhere to touch the alveolar ridge and if it is ing what happens the soft palate it starts playing its role and you can see while the production of these sounds nasal cavity is free and we are throwing the air through the nostrils can you see this very good you can concentrate you can see the red arrows what are they doing they are guiding in fact in fact that that what happens when we produce the nasal sounds all right that's pretty good that now you understand them this is the time to understand the stops the plosives plosives i want you to read the statement first of all like nasal consonants stop consonants occur when the vocal tract is closed completely now this is the line you must never forget like nasal consonants stop consonants occur when the vocal tract is completely closed or closed completely so this is what we have to understand again the airflow is stopped it is blocked it's very important it's very important to understand this but for stops the airflow is not redirected through the nose now what's the difference between nasal sound and stops this is what you have to remember 
we are saying that like nasal consonants like nasal consonants stop consonants occur when the vocal tract is closed completely now that doesn't mean that vocal tract is closed completely and that means that, all right this time we are again using nasal nasal cavity not at all not at all but remember for stops the airflow is not redirected through the nose no the soft palate is not playing its role to stop the air to go to oral cavity and allow the air to go through nasal cavity not at all no no redirection instead the air quickly builds up pressure behind the articulators and then releases in a burst there is a pressure behind the articulators what are the articulators for example may i say lips for example if i say p so both lips both lips have stopped the airflow so this is what i'm trying to make you understand that not like nasals so airflow doesn't uh, uh, use the nasal cavity channel rather it does use the oral cavity channel but what happens yes exactly the airflow is stopped and there is a pressure behind the articulators and then releases in a burst we will see what are the stops in the next slide but this is what you have to understand that all right nasal sounds clear that nasal cavity is used but when we talk about stops that doesn't mean that we are allowing the airflow to use the same channel that is nasal cavity not at all but here this time what happens only the articulators for example for the time being may i say uh, the lips they're not allowing the airflow go out but yes it allows the sound to build up a pressure behind the articulator and then there is a release release of airflow in a burst all right now let's look at the stops of the plosives as i told you in the previous slide all right there is difference between nasal sound and stops what is the difference i have already told you the nasal sounds are produced through the use of nasal cavity of course but it is not the case with the stops we have to use a different cavity and that is known as uh, oral cavity but what happened there is a pressure that is built in fact by the airflow behind the articulators and of course when the airflow is it, it goes out there is a release with the burst now look at the list of the stops you've got six stops of plosive plosive sound in front of you we shall try to learn we shall try to understand and we shall try to understand them how three examples let's try to understand the plosives which are also called stops or stops or plosive both are the same the first sound is p p the words are purse wrap when we produce purse and wrap what happens oral passage is blocked by closing the lips yes oral passage is blocked by closing the lips say the words again purse wrap please don't call this word as purse it is not purse purse wrap can you feel some sort of burst when you produce the sound p yes exactly purse wrap the next sound is b b let's try to understand the sound b with the help of these two words
back camp now what happens when we produce back and camp oral passage is blocked by closing the lips and again this is a bilabial sound okay bilabial sound back cab you can use some more words not necessarily these words but you can make a list of those words having bilabial sound uh, starting with b or maybe it is in the beginning or the, at, the, at the end of the word but at least we have to understand what is a stop all right our third sound is t let's understand this sound with help these two words tab rat tab rat now what happens when we are producing t sound oral passage is blocked by pressing the tongue tip against the alveolar ridge and that's why it is known as alveolar sound this is what i told you during the previous sessions t t right the oral passage is blocked by pressing the tongue tip against the alveolar ridge okay our next sound is d what are the words which can help us to understand this sound dip bad dip bad now what happens again you can see oral passage is blocked by pressing the tongue tip against the alveolar ridge so both these sounds are alveolar sound at the same time when we call them stops as per and bur are bilabial okay so per per ter de now next next uh, uh, next sound is k k and what are the words which can help us now to understand this sound kite back don't produce this sound as kite is kite g i i t t kite back so what happens when we are producing k sound block air flow with the back of the tongue against the soft palate you can feel it when you produce the sound k soft palate is blocking the air the air flow is blocked at that spot at that point so that's why we are capable of producing k sound and this is also known as vela our next sound which is the last plus is also vela what happened g g good bug good bug again the same thing block air flow with the back of the tongue against the soft palate so these are the six plosive plosives you can also call them stops p p t d k g if there is a question on you that can you tell us what are the plosives in english or what are the plosive english consonants so the answer is p b t d k g and again you can tell the class at the same time so first two are bilabial the next two are yes alveolar and the next two are vela absolutely right let's see what happens when we produce plosives can you see now in this diagram and in this demonstration can you see the soft palate can you see the use of your lips when we use uh, the sound per what happens then per 
then t, then d, then k, then g. If it's bilabial sound, what happens? The roll of lips. That's very important, isn't it? Now this is what you can understand. Uh, this is the demonstration, in fact, for all the students to understand that what happens when we are using plosives. Yes, as a young scientist who is very much interested to know about the world of phonetics, I think this is very important. And I'm sure after having this sort of demonstrations, you are capable of understanding the production of speech sound, especially the manner of articulation and the point of articulation. I told you that you cannot separate any basis, uh, any base or any aspect since we are classifying the consonants on the basis of three, on three bases, uh, the three aspects are there. One is the voicing, the other is the place of articulation, and the third one is the manner of articulation. Now this time we are engaged to understand uh, the consonants of English, but uh, with reference to manner of articulation. Now this time, after having seen what happened when we, are, when we produce nasal sounds, okay, the nasal cavity is very much active. But this time oral cavity is too much active but with the help of some other speech organs sometimes the lips sometimes the soft palate isn't it and sometimes the tongue is in fact just blocking the airflow now these this is what we call that uh, that is the procedure of the production of plosives uh, uh, english consonants all right after stops we have to understand what are the fricative sounds, the fricative. Let's read first of all, what are they? While nasal and stop consonants involve a complete blockage of the vocal tract, fricative sounds involve only a partial blockage of the vocal tract so that air has to be forced through a narrow channel. That's very important to understand. We were trying to understand what is the procedure, what is the manner of articulation for the production of nasal sounds and for the production of plosives. But this time what we need to understand is while nasal and stop consonants involve a complete blockage of the vocal tract. Now that is the most significant part of this slide that when we, when we are going to make a distinction in between nasal stops and fricatives. Remember while we are producing uh, nasal sound or stops what happens? There is a complete blockage of the vocal tract before the release of the airflow. But so far as the fricative sound are concerned, my dear students remember fricative sounds involve only a partial blockage of the vocal tract so that air has to be forced through a narrow channel. So that means Airflow needs some sort of narrow channel to pass on, to get out of the mouth somewhere. We have got two cavities, oral cavity and nasal cavity. Nasal cavity is not allowed except three sounds, myrna, ink, but that means the oral cavity. But we need what? A narrow channel. And the statement says again, for example, you create a stop consonant when you block airflow completely with your tongue against the alveolar ridge, isn't it? T. But if you let up with the tongue a bit and let the air seep through, you make an S, I mean sir, but here S fricative consonant, sir, sir, sir narrow channel is required and we have got a narrow channel when we produce the sound sir sir there is no complete blockage can you feel it absolutely not so sir sound in fact what you can see uh, the, uh, the sign of s in fact but is sir sound this is fricative consonant but it needs a narrow channel for the airflow there, so there is no blockage at all so far as the production of sir is concerned Okay. For example, say uh, I told you something about sir sound, exactly is the sign s of course. But now, uh, the list of fricative that is very much in front of you. We should try to understand this list. All right. 
So let's start. The first sound, the fricative is F. The words which are helping us are fro and calf. Air is forced to the upper teeth and lower lip. Of course, the class is like labiodental. F, fro, calf. Now, what is happening in fact? What is the manner of articulation? Air is forced through the upper teeth and lower lip. F, f. So, we were trying to understand the narrow channel. That means when we talk about the narrow channel for the airflow, that doesn't mean there is a blockage, a complete blockage. We don't feel any sort of complete block blockage when we talk about fricatives. And we can, through this demonstration, understand, oh yes, there is no blockage at all. No complete blockage or a block blockage at, uh, at all. The way we experienced when we were speaking or producing Myrna Ing, at the same time, some stops. This time, when I'm producing fur, you can feel, if you just follow me and say fur, you can feel the same thing that air is forced through the upper teeth and lower lip. Fur. Labiodental. And that is the same thing which happens to ver sound. Ver. Wine. Have. Air is forced to the upper teeth and lower lip. Again, this is a labiodental sound. Ver. Please don't mix this sound with wer. Wer is produced with rounded lips. But this wer is not produced like that. That is upper teeth and lower lip. We are trying to understand the manner of articulation. So air is first through the upper teeth and lower lip. So this is what we have to understand when we call them fricatives. The next is fer. Think. Bath. I told you, I think so, during the previous session, sometimes what happens uh, uh, in the light of my experience, some students try to write uh, some Urdu uh, sort of things to, to understand these sounds. Please don't do that. We have te, he, te. No, but please don't. Uh, you don't have to uh, learn uh, uh, English phonet of course, phonetics and English phonology like that. That is the wrong way. My suggestion to you people is that please never ever try to do that. Try to learn phonetics and phonology directly. So the sound is f, thick, bath. So what's happening in fact? Air is forced through upper teeth and tongue. Air is forced through upper teeth and tongue. It is a dental sound. And again the next, the, the and rather, the and rather, th, the, th, the, th, the. So air is also forced through upper teeth and tongue. In the case of the, th, the, air is forced through upper teeth and tongue. The next one is sir. The words which can help us understand this sound are suit, bus, suit, you can feel air is forced to tongue and alveolar ridge, suit, bus, suit, bus. Further, the next sound with us is in the fricative category Z. Z. As in zit and jaws. Watch air is forced through tongue and alveolar ridge. That is also called alveolar sound. The next sound is Z. Zit. Jaws. Zebra or zebra, zero. Air is forced through tongue and alveolar ridge. Our next sound is sh, sh. The words which can help us are short, 
brush. Now, try to feel air is forced to the tongue and point just beyond alveolar ridge. Sh, sh, short, brush. The next sound is j, j. The words which assist us to understand this sound are vision, measure, vision, measure. Most of the time, I have seen many people pronouncing these words as vian, maya. So, uh, that is the sound, to, at least that is quite strange sound to me. I have never heard any native speaker using this sound, vian, um, maya. So this is vision and measure, vision, vision, measure. Okay, so understand it. Air is forced to the tongue and point just beyond alveolar ridge. J, J, vision, measure. Yes, yes. The next fricative sound is h h actually it isn't fricative but it is considered to be fricative try to pronounce these words happy happy hope 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 so that's why it's technically not even a real consonant sound since there is no construction obstruction of airflow uh, that uh, sometimes the phoneticians believes and there is no obstruction and we understand uh, that uh, the difference between consonant and vowel is that when we produce some uh, consonant of course uh, uh, there is a construction uh, so far as the construction uh, a consonant uh, consonants are concerned but anyway it is also included sometimes as uh, one of the fricatives but it is not actually fricative sound okay Let's try to understand the fricatives through this demonstration. This is what I've been telling you while producing many sounds uh, which are fricative English consonants you can see. Now this is what happens inside us when we are producing fricative sounds, right? So exactly the oral cavity is very much uh, active and of course the speech organs, different speech organs are, are playing their role to produce fricative sounds. Can you understand now? All right, that's pretty good that you can see the air flow where it is going. Of course, that is the oral cavity. At this time, you can see that the nasal cavity is absolutely not busy. Absolutely not busy. As I told you time and again, that the nasal cavity definitely, and mostly, let me tell you that uh, it happens to the British uh, English speakers mostly it does not happen to the people who are prone to speak American English because I have heard somebody saying or some of the people believe that American speakers they are very much inclined to use nasal cavity while using these consonants anyways but we can see that this what happens in British English I'm talking about that because we have got only three nasal sounds it is possible I'm wrong but mostly what happens uh, generally speaking that I have heard some professors saying that uh, 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 American uh, English speakers of course they are inclined to use nasal cavity mo most of the time so not necessarily Myrna Ing but remember principally speaking uh, it, it may be a not true uh, statement but we have to understand that we are left with the three we are left with three nasal uh, sounds which are m, n, and ing, and most of the time you can see that this is the oral cavity that is very much busy, and the speech organs which are assisting. Right, you can see soft palate, and of course tongue is playing the major role. That is the most active articulator. And of course, at the same time we have lips. I'm not saying that uh, uh, the other speech organs are not contributing, but remember tongue is playing the active role. So you can see that this is how the uh, uh, the fricative sounds are produced and that is what the true demonstration of uh, the airflow okay now let's try to understand the africa sounds 
when stop consonants mix, mix with fricative consonants the result is an affricate consonant when stop consonants mix with fricative consonants the result is an affricate consonant so the mixture of what plosives stops and fricatives so with the mixture of this what happens the result is an affricate consonant remember affricate consonants start as stop sounds with air building up behind an articulator which then releases through a narrow channel as a fricative instead of a clean burst as stops do so this is the mixture you can understand i repeat an affricate consonant or affricate consonants start as stop sounds where they are building up behind an articulator what happens this right what happens when air is built when the pressure is built yes exactly in the stops which then releases through a narrow channel but remember in stops we don't have the narrow channel the absolute blockage of airflow is there so that's why over here it's the mixture of stops and fricative consonants yes exactly so Afric affricate consonants start as stop sound with the air building up behind an articulator which then releases through a narrow channel as fricative as fricative as fricative instead of clean burst as stops do so there is a narrow channel required over here that's a mixture of stops and what fricative yes exactly fricative let's try to understand the african sounds or african english consonants which are how many two absolutely right now the first sound or English consonant that is African English consonant is ch. Ch. Chick. Match. Not only these two words, but you can use as many words containing the sound ch. Ch. Church. Lunch catch itch okay lunch what is happening in fact when you produce ch sound air is blocked with tongue just beyond the alveolar ridge then released as fricative there is no stop sign of thing right but there is a mixture of stop and what fricative this is what we are trying to understand affricate yes and affricate is made how with the blend of stop and fricative sound ch the sounds are ch and j but first we are talking about ch the words which are helping us to understand these sounds are chick and match. Air is blocked with tongue just beyond the alveolar ridge, then released as a fricative. This is what happens when we produce the sound j. J. As in jam, badge, judge, justice jury judge you can use many words and you can understand air is blocked with tongue just beyond the alveolar ridge then released as a fricative all right so these two sounds ch and j ch and j once again my a uh, regular request that please don't try to understand uh, these consonants of course if i talk about english consonants and vowels by comparing them with your own language what happens then you will not be able to understand english directly i want you to learn whatever it is you may take time you may take time as much as you need but remember think directly so the sounds african sounds are ch 
and j. Ch and j. Good. The next category of the class is according to the manner, manner of articulation. So far as the consonants of English are concerned, is approximants. Remember, approximants are when two articulators come close together, but not quite close enough to create air turbulence. This is a very simple statement that is uh, quite easier to store in your mind that approximants are the consonants, approximants which are known as, they are what? They are when two articulators come close together. Articulators do come close, but not quite close enough. They do come close, but not quite close enough to create air turbulence. This is very important. The articulators, whatever they are, when they just work together, they come closer, but they don't come so close to create air turbulence while producing approximate. Okay? Now let's try to understand what are the approximates. Remember, generally believed that there are three English approximates. And let's try to understand the what are they. The first one is work. W, rounded lips, W, wet, Howard, wet, Howard. Now what happens when we produce W sound? Back of tongue raises to vellum and lips are rounded. This is what I was telling you before. Back of tongue raises to vellum but not too close but not too close and lips are rounded well well done welcome please do not try to mix this sound with v no it's not v let be a dental do you remember v f v so this is w you have to round your lips when you are producing w sound so what happens when we are producing this sound back of tongue raises to vellum but not too close and lips are rounded and what happens when we produce v sound the upper teeth are on the lower lip so that is a big difference between v and w this time i hope that you are quite capable to understand whenever i'm uh, using either v sound or w sound maybe in the connected speech and i'm sure that whenever I make a mistake, you can just mark it. All right, the instructor is in fact mixing w with v, w and v, w and v. It's it's quite easy because what happens? Uh, the auditory the auditory phonetics in fact uh, helps you to determine whether the sound produced with the rounding of the lips or by touching the upper teeth on the lower lip is quite natural. So this is what the smart move of the student when he or she is capable of understanding now that all right this is the word sound and this is the ver sound maybe that is spoken that is used in the connected speech maybe some uh, speaker is very fast but what happens when the speaker is speaking and you are alive to the situation you know the concept behind this you have read about ma uh, manner of articulation and of course the place of articulation you understand no, it is w or v, and that is a vela sound. The next sound is y. Please don't mix it with j. No, it is not j. It is y. Yes. Okay. Beo. Ba. No. Y. Y. Yes your yesterday yummy right so what happens when we produce this sound tongue raises to hard palate but not too close but not too close the tongue is raised to hard palate alveolar ridge alveolar ridge alveolar ridge 
but not too close. And same happens what uh, to, to, to R sound. R, that is again an approximant. R, right. R, again tongue raises to heart palate, but not too close. Okay? And this sound is known as post alveolar, or you can call it alveolar. That one is plateau, but this one is alveolar. R, right. R, tongue raises to hard palate. Good. Yes, hard palate. Hard palate. And this is how we produce approximate R and Y. R and Y. R and Y. You can understand, of course, the hard palate. You understood the use of hard palate, of course. Tongue is doing what? But remember, there is a difference. While we produce R, what is the position of the tongue? And when we use Y, yes, you, yesterday, yo, yummy, whatever. These are the so R and Y. And we have to uh, extend our courtesy to our manual, published in 2001. So, this is what the approximates of English, of course, why is there? I've already told you that you have to round your lips, but this is R and Y. My dear students, the last sound of uh, this category or these categories, of course, when you're talking about consonants of English with, uh, with reference to manual articulation, is lateral. Lateral consonant is when the tongue blocks the middle of your mouth so that air has to pass around the sides. That's very important to understand that air does pass, but it passes around the sides of your tongue. There is only one lateral consonant in English. There is only one lateral consonant in English and that is L. You can pronounce the word luck and you can understand that air is passing but it is passing around the side of your tongue. Okay? And you have to place the tip of the tongue at the alveolar ridge. Place the tip of the tongue at the alveolar ridge and say L. Now air is passing but from where? around the sides of your tongue around the sides of your tongue and that is the only english consonant lateral there is only one l l luck lion long okay good well my dear students today we have talked about the classification uh, of English consonants uh, with reference to manner of articulation. We try to understand uh, what are the classes of all the consonants of English. And uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, the examples which I provided uh, uh, in the slides uh, are not sufficient, but you can just uh, pick up some more uh, uh, examples and you can uh, produce uh, certain sounds. But the most important thing is that you need to practice. Of course, you can write first of all on a piece of page and at the same time then you have to demonstrate, you have to pronounce the words containing one particular consonant sound. And then please, my suggestion is that you have to record your voice. It's very good practice. I, I always favor this one and time and again during uh, every session. I think so. I just uh, make a request to all my students that the most important activity you can do after listening to this demonstration or maybe other demonstrations is that you have to record your voice since particularly i'm talking about phonetics and phonology because by the end of this course what you need to do because that's my expectation i hope that i set uh, an objective for me that uh, my students of course shall be saying i love phonetics and it is only possible that uh, we start practicing and we do activities during the session and after the session. 
So for this session, uh, the self-assessment component is that please classify English consonants in detail with reference to the manner of articulation. This is what we have done today. We try to understand all English uh, consonants uh, by giving certain examples. And of course, I tried my level best to uh, pronounce the words and the sounds which uh, are in those words. And at the same time, I requested you that you have to do the same practice. So uh, after this session from my side, thank you very much. Goodbye and good luck. Stay blessed.